National Ozone Unit of Trinidad and Tobago, that's under the Ministry of Planning and Development, jointly with the Tobago Tourism Agency Limited, as well as Green TNT. So today we're targeting various accommodation providers across Trinidad and Tobago because we want you to be able to enhance your energy management practices at your tourism accommodation properties to be more sustainable, but also to align with the requirements for the prestigious Green Key Equal Label. So we'll hear more about Green Key and we'll hear more from the presentation later down today from Mr. Ronaldo Mohamed Jalil, who's the energy efficiency specialist at the National Ozone Unit. Before we get into the educational and interactive elements of today's session, first I'd like to introduce to you a representative from the Tobago Tourism Agency Limited who will be bringing brief remarks. Good afternoon to all. Hello? Yes, we're hearing you and ladies and gentlemen, Bringing to you to the webinar, or voice only, is Mr. Louis Lewis, the CEO of the Tobago Tourism Agency Limited, to bring brief remarks. We can hear you, Louis, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Tineen. Um, Good afternoon to all. I am very happy that we've all been able to be here on this webinar. It's a very important collaboration for us um, with the Tobago Tourism Agency, partnering with the Division of the Environment, the Stakeholders Green TT, um, and also the Ministry of, 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 um, of Sustainable Development. We are very happy to have this webinar at this time because it, it's one that is very important for us. One that is very important from the standpoint of having branded Tobago as a green destination. And I say branded as a green destination because we are presenting ourselves as this attractive, iconic, um, environmental, sustainable, destination and that is what the brand reflects and it is very important for us that all our partners are in sync with that initiative and green tt of course is a partner with us on this initiative where we are focusing on those sustainable initiatives that not only are attractive but also redound to the bottom line and it is that same sustainable development platform that is going to make us a little more competitive and a little more attractive at this time in the tourism development cycle. And when I say at this time in the tourism development cycle, I am not only thinking of where we want to go as a destination, but particularly what the world is looking for. And we are actually in that stream. We've started the conversation. There are a number of initiatives that we have started that are pointed in that direction. Um, and there are a number of assets we have that make us outstanding in that direction. And if I may just articulate what some of those are, the, the, the attractive nylon pool is one that pulls out our destination as attractive. The properties that have already signed up for Green Key and how we are making headway in that environmental sustainable um, streamline, that is another one. We also have the iconic Man and the Bias Fred accreditation for us as a destination, as well as the flag pilot status for at least three of our beaches. So we are in that stream and it's now for us to demonstrate not only by title, but by action where we are with regard to our accommodation properties. So I'm very happy that this conversation is happening. Participation of a number of our stakeholders is, is, coming, on, is coming on stream and we are now moving deeply into that direction, because I dare say that this is exactly where our competitiveness will redound. So I'd like to thank everybody for being here, and I wish you, you know, an, an interactive and enjoyable sustainable accommodation sector discussion on the energy efficiency that we are going to feature in the, as we go forward. So thank you very much from the Tobago Tourism Agency. Thank you, Miss. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Lewis. Uh, that's Mr. Lewis, the CEO of the Tobago Tourism Agency. And as many of you may know, the core mandate of the TTAL is to lead the rede redevelopment of the island's tourism product and the marketing and repositioning of Tobago as a premier island destination 
most importantly, founded on the principles of sustainable development. Our next speaker coming up before the educational section of the webinar is our representative from Green TNT, Michelle Lewis. And of course, Green TNT is an expert based e NGO, environmental NGO, with the mandate to improve the competitiveness and profitability of the Caribbean's hospitality and tourism sector through the implementation of green international standards, certification programs, education, and research. So welcome to our online session, Michelle Lewis from Green TNT. We're happy to have you. Over to you, Michelle. Thank you, Tanil. Good afternoon, everyone. The Green TNT team is excited to be here today and to collaborate with both the Environmental Policy and Planning Division in the Ministry of Planning and Development and the Tobago Tourism Agency on this initiative. Green TNT is a national coordinator for two international environmental eco labels, the Blue Flag and Green Key programs. Green Key in particular relates to the tourism accommodation sector and the criteria for award focuses on categories that relate to environmental management, waste, water, and energy conservation, among other sustainability indicators. In doing so, achieving the Green Key Eco Label provides cost savings benefits to your businesses, marketing and promotion of your property as safe and eco-friendly, as well as international accreditation, which aligns your establishment with sustainability best practices worldwide. Recent data from Booking.com revealed that 76% of travelers are pledging to seek out properties that have received sustainable certification. Already, there are over 3,200 hospitality businesses in 65 countries worldwide with the Green Key certification. It is therefore important as a post-COVID-19 recovery strategy that establishments are aware of the information provided today in this seminar and take advantage of certifications like the Green Key Program to become more competitive, profitable, and visible amongst the global tourism landscape. We encourage you to sign up today. Currently, participation in the program is at no cost with the relevant approval from TTAL. We are very pleased to be a part of the session today and to share with our valued stakeholders information that can contribute to your establishment's success. We trust that you will enjoy this session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle, for bringing those remarks. And I must add that all accommodation providers, specifically in Tobago, as well as Trinidad, who are interested in finding out more about Green Key, can visit green-tt.org for more information. Green TNT can also be found on Facebook. And on that note, I forgot to mention, you can also look up the Tobago Tourism Agency Limited, which has information on Green Key on the island, as well as many other initiatives for the tourism sector by visiting www.tobagobeyond.com. So moving swiftly along, I'm very pleased to invite to the virtual space our next speaker, who is a representative from the National Ozone Unit of Trinidad and Tobago, a very hardworking individual from what I've seen so far, and very passionate about what she does. I'm pleased to introduce Ms. Marissa Gowry to bring remarks to this event. Welcome, Marissa. Happy to have you. Thank you so much, Tanila. Just making sure that you can hear me well. Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Excellent. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for that introduction. Um, it is my great pleasure to be able to bring just a few words of welcome to all those who are joining us today on behalf of the National Ozone Unit in the Ministry of Planning and Development. We're very grateful and happy and encouraged to have, um, you know, started this collaboration with Green TNT and the Tobago Tourism Agency Limited. We feel that this is definitely an avenue where we can reach a further group of stakeholders to help us achieve our goals of sustainable development. At the National Ozone Unit, we particularly deal with the implementation of something called the Montreal Protocol, which really is an international agreement that has been set up globally 
to protect something called the ozone layer, which just very quickly is a very thin shield that surrounds the globe that filters UV rays from the sun and without which life on Earth would not be able to flourish. And there are certain man-made chemicals that cause harm to this ozone layer that are found predominantly in the refrigeration air conditioning sector. So that some of the things that will be touched in this webinar are ways that within your operations, as well as in refrigeration and air conditioning in your operations, you can encourage ozone-friendly practices, climate-friendly practices, and energy-efficient practices that would, of course, assist not only your, your bottom line in terms of you know, the money that you spend, but also help us to reach our environmental goals. So again, welcome everyone. And I very much look forward to future webinars that we have through this collaboration and for the information that will be shared today. Back to you, Tineo, thank you. Thank you so much, Marissa. And yes, there will be many more opportunities to find out on how we can do a part to protect this earth while also protecting our businesses. So do stay tuned as we'll have more information and follow-up webinars and how you can stay in touch with the various organizations hosting today. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the main speaker for today's webinar, Mr. Ronaldo Jalil, the Energy Efficiency Specialist at the National Ozone Unit. Ronaldo Jalil is an energy efficiency and renewable energy professional with over seven years experience as a project engineer and consultant for the development of sustainable energy projects. He has developed training courses in energy efficiency and renewable energy to impart to persons the economic benefits of identifying potential energy saving opportunities and implement strategies to reduce energy use, minimize costs, reduce greenhouse gas emissions and improve business performance. Ronaldo is always willing to work towards a greener, and more economically sustainable future for Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you the, to the virtual space, Mr. Ronaldo Jalil for his presentation, after which we will have a Q&A. So welcome, Ronaldo, and we're looking forward to hear what you have to bring for us this afternoon. Um, good day, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, today I'll be talking to you about um, the value that energy efficiency can bring to the hotel industry, especially after um, how it's been, how the tourism industry has been severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and cost saving solutions and, and, and uh, needed in order to move forward sustainably. So start by starting off, um, why energy? Energy is um is the foundation of everything we do from entertainment, lighting, transport, air conditioning. We can't go about our daily lives without energy. And energy efficiency is about using less energy, but also using it more wisely. Um, so just to tell you how um, we take energy for granted, here are some pictures to show you how energy is easily wasted every day, especially in a country like Trinidad and Tobago, where <clears throat> the cost of um, electricity is, is very low. You see lights um, on during, during the day, you see air conditioning, um, air, um, cold air leaking out of air conditioning ducts. These are some of some of the examples of how we take energy for, for granted. But remember, you're, pay, you're paying for this um, energy. So um, energy efficiency is important, not just for reducing the electricity costs, but also to reduce your long-term maintenance and repair costs and maintain the longest lifespan of your, of your equipment. And also as well to ensure human comfort and health, which uh, of course, it's very important to hotels as this is what, what you all are in, in the business of. So energy efficiency can provide much long-term value of which I'll show you now. So I got this information from Chenac, the Caribbean Hotel Energy Efficiency Action Program that was done about 10 years ago. It was an inter-island program where they did assessments on, um, on <clears throat> the energy use in, in hotels throughout the Caribbean. And this is what it came up with. This chart shows you that um, the majority of, of um, energy consumption comes from um, uh, comes from air conditioning, and then you have lighting, pumps, refrigeration, all that. So that's just, that's just to let you know that um, the majority. Uh, well, I'll show you energy saving tips for all these other things. Majority of the emphasis will be placed on um, on air conditioning. And as we go through the presentation, you'll hear me refer to like small size, medium size, large size hotel, depending on the number of rooms. 
and also types of air conditioning units that these would use like um split air conditioning units you'd see mostly in, in your home or what you'd see in small hotels but as the hotel size gets larger you'd see a larger air conditioning systems like central air conditioners and maybe for the very largest of hotels you might see um chilled water systems <clears throat> so um going forward right the important um the important thing to know is what you're actually being charged for by by the electric company on your on your electric bill there there are two things there's a there's a kilowatt hour consumption charge and the, and the kva demand charge <clears throat> this one is is basic um that's the amount of electricity you consume over 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 the time period whereas a kva demand charge refers to your maximum amount of power you acquired over that that period of time <clears throat> in Trinidad and tobago it's like um, every six months so um, to under, um first I'll, I'll explain ways you could reduce some um, kilowatt hours <clears throat> um it's very easy to, to estimate it's just it's based on um the every every appliance you have like air conditioners and refrigerators every appliance has a electrical power rating in which it needs to um to operate with and then you multiply by that by the amount of time you actually use that appliance for to get your, your energy in kilowatt hours which goes directly here on the electric bill so i'll be showing you ways in which you could reduce both these figures kilowatt hours kv just remember that um energy efficiency is not just about reducing these figures alone it's also about reducing your operations and maintenance costs as well as improving the value you give to your to your customers your hotel guests so simple ways we can um reduce our electric bills <clears throat> specifically the kilowatt hour consumption charge um you know well most of the first thing most obvious of all is to turn off all all appliances when not in use to help with that there, there, there are these things called power strips which um but the reason you might need them is because even if you have some um an appliance plugged on it still consumes um electricity um so i mean yeah, that, that's what you call vampire loads they could they'd always absorb a little bit of your um, electricity so you could use these power strips as central to turning off points you know to, to cut the electricity supply especially you could you especially use this during the off off peak seasons when you, so certain hotel rooms are not going to be be used as as often and then you must have heard already about up, upgrading to led light i just like to mention also that some value that this could add to hotels is that led lights are dimmable for aesthetics which maybe uh <clears throat> maybe a hotel guest might like also occupancy sensors and motion sensors such as uh for lights such as in the hallways bathrooms restaurants i've seen hot, um, hotels or, um, in different parts of the world are um, already using this to manage to manage how how, um, how often their lights are on you could um, purchase energy star rated appliances this is our energy rating system they use in the usa for appliances um also for their, their devices for, for pool pumps that some most some hotels larger hotels might use medium and large hotels might use um and even other water pumps as well you can install devices called variable frequency drives with that which actually help to adjust the speed of the pumps so that they don't produce as much um i mean they don't consume as much energy as as they normally would and to think um, some suggestions to help with air conditioning of uh, using curtains as curtain blinds or, or window tint to help block the sunlight from entering the room as well as sealing off any cracks or openings in the walls and ceilings that allow hot air to come in. All these things could these things could strain your air conditioning unit when it when it's trying to cool your room. So this helps to prevent that. And more suggestions as well related to air conditioning. You can use like ceiling fans or even standing fans to to help um circulate the air, the cool air better. You can use this together with the air conditioning. Um or uh, there's there's even the um the cassette air conditioning unit these are um but what you normally have in your home you might have the the, the, the ones that you install on your wall the cassette is just uh, is very similar is except it's installed on your ceiling instead and if it's in a central part of the ceiling of your room it could give a more even distribution of, of cold air throughout your room than one that's installed on the wall so fans and cassette air conditioners you could consider using those together with you know um, air conditioning also um properly insulate your refrigerant 
mine's on the air conditioning unit. Um, refrigerant gas is what actually um, is what actually does the cooling in an air conditioning unit. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, but, but that's what actually traps the heat. So you don't want to trap heat to go back into your room. So it's important to insulate these lines properly. Also to get it for medium and large hotels that use central air conditioning or even chill water systems. Um, you could use, use like thermostat controls that could help uh, automatically adjust the, um, the, the amount of uh, air conditioning coming into a room, depending on how hot or cold, cold the room gets. Um, so thereby saving energy. For small hotels, I mean, you're, you're more limited to split units, but there are very expensive brands of split units that, that have some um, automatic controls. But like I say, it comes with a little extra expense. Um, then there's, you know, clean the coils of your, of your mini fridges. And most important of all, clean and service your air conditioning systems regularly so, so that the operator at, at, the, at, the, at the top, um, you know, they function at their top performance. Um, and last but not least, using these little energy conservation signs, if you don't already have them in, in your guest rooms, these, these can go a long way to help and convince your, your guests to, you know, help saving and help you save energy as well. And this is, um, so the, the, uh, these are some tips you could go, you could go with, but you don't have to limit yourself to this. These are only by more energy saving um, act actions you, 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 could, you could take as well. So don't just limit yourself to just these suggestions alone. As for, as for a long-term action plan, um, I got some here from um, from, from same um, Chen, um, Chenak as well. If you want more information on, on what Chenak was about, um, I actually put links in the, in the reference slide at the end of this, this slide presentation for you all to look at in your spare time. Um, so the, these, are, these are their words, what they've recommended for long-term action plans for the hotel sector, like promote energy efficiency, you know, training and capacity building program for, for staff, um, conduct energy audits to see where energy is being wasted and um, share the results with, you know, other members of the hotel sector as well. You know, um, accelerate the elimination of ozone and global warming sub substances um, also. And on a governmental level, propose, you know, like revisions um, to, to the tourism, to the country's tourism act to include, you know, um, energy efficiency, carbon neutrality, as well as um, even some renewable energy as well, maybe. But like I say, these aren't my words. These are the, the words of um, recommendations made by this, by this program that was done like about 10 years ago. Um, so, so moving forward, I'm going to tell you a bit about some more air conditioning um, technologies, the latest technologies that, um, <clears throat> that could really make a difference in, in your energy consumption, as well as reducing your operations and maintenance costs as well. First thing I want to mention is that um, air conditioning units actually have an have a energy efficiency rating system. <clears throat> Most times you see this one called the Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio, SEER. Um, we don't get into technical. All you need to know is that the higher the number, the more the more you can, the more energy efficient the air conditioning unit is. And one one thing you should note is that according to U.S. government standards, any air conditioning unit with a SEER rating that's below thirteen should not be considered energy efficient. So anything above thirteen is definitely an energy efficient um, or unit. So bear that in mind next time you're purchasing air conditioning systems. Um, um, bear this, this number in mind, 13 as, as a minimum, as a minimum value. And then there's um there, there's also inverter air conditioning technology is becoming popular now in Trinidad and Tobago, and it's definitely been around for a long time in the other Caribbean islands. <clears throat> um now, the, these units are a little more expensive than the normal air conditioning units, traditional units, and they're not, um, they, they look exactly the same. The, the only difference is what's inside, which is a, also a variable frequency drive, similar to what, what, you, what I mentioned before that they install on the pool pumps. They, they have these drives built in that help adjust the speed of the, com the compressor motor. This not only saves energy, but also could re um, reduce the frequency of, um, maintenance and repair problems and refrigerant leaks and could extend extend the life of your air of your air conditioning systems. Now um, it, this is because of its it, it costs more than a traditional unit. So it is a hard sell 
to um, the homeowners. But I think for hotels, with the amount of air conditioning units you need for every single room and, and other other types of, of not just for guest room, but all uh, other areas of the hotel as well. I would I would say that um I would definitely recommend upgrading to inverter air conditioning unit units. It's not just about the, the don't just look at the at the initial purchasing cost, but think about the long-term benefits that that um you would have like 10 years from now, not only savings in, in energy, but as well as a reduction in maintenance and, and repair costs as well. <clears throat> there's a there's another um, air con re um recent air conditioning technology called re um, variable refrigerant flow, which is which is actually um an alternative to the traditional split units. So instead of having these um these split units on every window of every um of every guest room, you could have one big VR system instead, which is just just like it's very similar to the split unit where you have an outdoor unit and you have an indoor unit. Um so um so basically the well what it is instead of one a uh, one indoor unit connected to one outdoor unit you have an outdoor unit connected to multiple indoor units like i say one system for every for every guest room uh, and so it sounds like a great technology right and that is very energy efficient however you must bear in mind that vrf comes with several several very huge risk factors for one thing um you might not it might not just be one outdoor unit you might have like two or three or even more outdoor units but all of them will be connected to multiple um multiple indoor units the only problem is if something happens to these outdoor units it could affect the indoor units they're attached to and this could affect multiple rooms for a hotel that could be detrimental to your to your avenues because you wouldn't be able to if, if the air conditioning is working properly you won't be able to offer those rooms to, to guests you need to bear that in mind um, also, what you need to bear in mind is you see the amount these pipelines here, all these are refrigerant pipelines. The, um, so the, the amount of it here is very difficult to, to, to pick up if um, if there are weak refrigerant leaks throughout this entire network. And if, if there if, if refrigerant is weak, refrigerant gas is leaking, the, the, the um, this air conditioning system won't do what it's supposed to do, which is absorb heat and produce cold coal there. So you need to be mindful of that as well, and also be mindful of the fact that um, you need you need specialized technicians trained in in VRF to operate and maintain the the, the VRF system, unlike with split units. So um, so basically, it's 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 like this. There there are ways to mitigate this risk, however, you could need these risks. Ensure that um, you know the VRF is when it's installed, it's commissioned properly, so you don't have issues. Um, like like in the in the months ahead after it's installed, I make sure it's recommissioned every three to five years. I'll explain more on, on, on commissioning and retro commissioning later on in the slides. The second thing, most important thing, is to have a properly a proper maintenance contract in place with a HVAC company to to to, to maintain these systems properly. And that's if you know your hotel can budget for it, or you know, outsource the entire operations to a HVAC company. If 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 your hotel could budget for it. Normally, I don't encourage the use of VRF because um, you can't always um, you can't always count on the consumer organization to to, to make that commitment to to, to, um, to be responsible for proper maintenance of the system. But if if you if you think your organization can meet meet that commitment, then but then by all means go ahead because you have a lot to benefit from it. But um, all I can say is. So uh, there's huge there's huge risk to it because there's some some hotels across the Caribbean have accepted the technology while others have rejected the technology and they rather they stick to using split units as, instead, which are much simpler to to deal with. If 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 um you do your own risk analysis and you think um, the RF is 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 I mean it, it's too much it's too much trouble to work there, to work these risks, then um I would suggest. At least upgrade, upgrading a split units to inverter, which I mentioned in the previous slide. Try to upgrade these to inverter types. All right, and um, that's that's it really for air conditioning and ways you could reduce the kilowatt hour consumption. Now, I want to get into how to um the, the second thing that goes on your bill. Remember, there's two things: kilowatt hour consumption on the electric bill, and then there's KVA demand charge. Um, this this is actually a, a lot harder to um, to explain, 
So uh, what our energy experts around the world use is something called the bear, the bear analogy to help um, people understand what it's all about. So the KV charge, right, that is read off the electric meter and what the electric company bills you for is actually made up of two things. So think of the of, of the of when you buy a bear, right? Um, this the liquid part here. This is the part that actually is of value to you, right? This let's say this represents the electricity that you that all your um, equipment um, uses, and um, let's say this fraught on top here, which is actually of no value to you at all, is is actually but. Um, this is what is that's let's, let's say it's basically magnetism. So this is the electricity that your your um, your equipment uses, and this is magnetism. Now, what's what is the problem with this? Well, let's let's think of a certain scenario, right? Um, let's say one of your hotel guests come come to come by your restaurant or bar to and order a beer, right? And you serve them this. Now that that customer is gonna get really angry with you. Um, you know, that is, they, they have very good reason to get angry. Now, the, now, think of, now put yourself in that customer's shoes and think of your electric company as, um, as the one serving you the bear. And this is exactly what, what, what is going on right here. Um, because if you do nothing to, to deal with this, this reactive power here, um, if you do nothing at all, this is just going to build up and it's only going to increase your KV. Remember, this provides absolutely no value to you. This is what the, the electricity that your equipment are using. This is just what, like magnetic fields build, build, building up, basically. Um, so if you do nothing to deal with this, um, you'll be paying very high K, KVA bills. Um, so what, how, how, you, how, how do you deal with this? Oh, first, let me just mention too. That's not um, driving up your KV the, um, reading isn't isn't the only thing this causes a problem for. This reactive pro power could also um, affect the flow of electricity in your building. Um, what you want is like smooth a smooth flow of electricity into your equipment and through the wiring in your building. Um, Something think about um water flowing through a pipe. If it flows through, if it flows too roughly, too turbulent, it could drop if corrupt your pipes, right? Um, same thing with electricity. If electricity is not flowing smoothly through a building, as says is moving, is flowing very chaotically, very turbulently, to put it in simple terms. Who knows what kind of damage that it caused to your, all your electrical equipment um, over, over the years. You know, you never know. So um, it's very important that you you reduce this this K this K bar reactive power. Um, what you do is some to do to, to deal with that, you do something called power factor correction. Power factor is 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 like the ratio of this of this, the kilowatts of power you use over the KVA that is that is read on a meter. And what the ideal thing is to have your KVA um, equal to, to, to pretty much just the exact same thing as your as as your kill kilowatts. Uh, and you get a value of like a, a one for your power factor. So um, it, yeah, so why is this a problem in the first place, right? Is because um, equipment that contain motors, like like um, like refrigerators, air conditioners, fans, pumps, think of a motor as something that spins, right? Like how your fan spins, they contain motors. Any, anything with, any, any equipment with motors um, contribute to something called electromagnetic induction. All right, um, which uh, which basically is what generates all this reactive power, and what what you need is something called capacitance, which we think of it as the opposite of inductance. That so, in other words, devices called capacitors can um, can be installed in your building to help you do what you do, correct the power factor. Now, I understand this could be a bit technical and difficult to understand for some people, so that's why I highlighted this hand in blue. This is all you need to really know. All you need to know as a consumer organization is to just make a request to any electrical contractor, tell them what you want to do is exactly to crack your building's power factor to within 0 0.95 to, to one. Um, and then um, the, the electrical contractor will handle the rest. They will know exactly what you want. And that's all you really need to know. Once they could do this for you, and they'll do it by like in, um, installing devices called capacitors, 
they, they, they would then, um, that these devices would then remove this and you would get um, a KVA, you'll be end up being built for KVA that is exactly close to, or, or very close to what your actual um, power that you actually use, nothing more than that. All right, and this, I, and I think that um, for hotels, power factor correction is, is maybe more important than most other business types of businesses because of the amount of um, air conditioners, fans, pumps, refrigerators that, um, that a hotel uses compared to other, other types of businesses. So I would say for me to assume that power factor correction is maybe needed by, by hotels, maybe more than most other organizations. All right, and then coming out to the end of the presentation, so I told you how to deal with kilowatt hours and how to reduce KVA demand. Um, just want to mention um, some about up, um, how you, how you, like main, maintaining operations and maintenance. One thing that could help with, with maintenance is developing standard operating procedures. It's basically just written documents of procedures to follow to gov govern efficient operational maintenance of everything, air conditioning, electrical, and plumbing within your hotels. You know, you develop like inspections and preventative and corrective maintenance procedures for energy efficient operation and to actually track your equipment performance. You have forms with checklists and procedures for non-conformance and schedules and then for, for air conditioning and lighting. What this does is help to bring some order and, and stability to your, to your, and also accountability as well to your operations and, and maintenance in, in your hotel. Um, whether for, for even um, it's, this is especially important for large hotels, but even small hotels can benefit from standard operating procedures as well. And like I say, just documentation that you have to write up on procedures. Uh, that's really it. Um, but I think it's very important, especially the larger the hotel, the more expensive these procedures are um, to, to help reduce your, your operations and maintenance costs. And then there's retro commissioning. The tinkle if maintenance maintenance is actually a, an op, a continuous operation. I could do daily, weekly, monthly, depending on your need. But commissioning is a project, a one-time project to do like every three to five years. Well, actually, commissioning itself is for when you're installing new systems. You're doing all the examining, test, verifying, and testing to make sure everything was installed properly so they don't encounter any unforeseen issues in, in the months after installation. And then you have recommissioning, which is basically you're doing all these checks and verifications again, but every like three to five years. Now, retro commissioning is a term we use when there, there was never any commissioning done before on the air conditioning, electrical and plumbing systems in your building. This is most likely the case with a lot of small hotels. I can say retro commissioning is basically on get get the building owners get together with facility staff, technicians, even some engineers and other professionals. And they take steps like this, um, you know, meeting and examining, verifying equipment, developing improvement plans or even upgrades, and even include some infect infectious disease mitigation plans as well with this COVID uh, situation we're in. Also perform calibrations and repairs, you know, um, further improvement opportunities, and then submitting a final report and recommendations to the owner. Um, <clears throat> like I said, um, it's something you could do every three to five years. The project could do every three to five years. Even even small hotels can benefit from a retro commissioning project of, or every five years or so. But I would say that this is an absolute must for for large hotels. If you don't do retro commission every every few years, the entire hotel every. Few, Every few years, you're just asking for, for a lot of maintenance and issues and problems um, over um, um, in, the, in the future, uh, unexpected problems. <clears throat> so last but not least, I um, just want to mention something about indoor and air quality sensors. Um, these days with the pa pandemic, um, things like monitoring temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide levels, and even um, Particulate matter is um is like dust. Uh. This could this could um if you, and even if you have modern monitoring videos like in guest rooms and um and and the lounge and gym and thing, this could actually show guests that you, that your hotel is operating within healthy and clean parameters. And of course, energy efficient operation could also um could 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 also contribute a lot to maintaining these positive parameters. And like I say, this this seems to be what um, hotels are going, the future in which hotels around the world are going towards now. 
having these monitoring systems in, pl in place in every room for, for guests to see that, you know, you're in a good environment, a clean, healthy environment. So if there's one thing you should be looking into for the future, it should definitely be this. And um, so then, yeah, here's some more, here's some reference, especially with, with regard to, to Trenac, if you want to hear more information on that. And thank you for listening and any questions, please. Thank you so much, Ronaldo, for that presentation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as Ronaldo would have indicated, our Q&A is now open. We do see that a few of you have already asked uh, some questions in the chat. So if that's okay, Ronaldo, we can just start there. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'll just start with a recommendation, as Mike would have mentioned, that he suggested using sensible wireless AC controls, which work from your phone. He says, we have saved thousands over the last couple of years with these. Any thoughts on that recommendation, Ronaldo? Um, uh, do these come with, um, with, split, with normal split units that you're trying for small, for small hotels? I mean, for large hotels, yes, you could definitely use, use that medium and large hotels, yes. But I'm not sure about if um, split units come with these technologies. But if they do, then, then yes, definitely. OK, great. Thanks so much for that, Mike. I hope uh, that gives you an answer as well or feedback on your recommendation. We have another attendee asking, if you're turning your AC on and off within a two hour span, would an inverter AC be feasible or the traditional condenser type AC? Within a two hour span, well, um, let's see. Um, no, I can say, I, I don't think it'll be all that sensible, but remember this is hotels we're talking about. I didn't mention in the presentation, like inverters are hard sell. To, to, to normal homeowners because it um yeah, I mean you might not have it depends on the person on the homeowner they might not have the air conditioning on very often like if you, if you have an air conditioner unit that's that you don't operate very often then um what's the point of spending the extra money on an inverter right but um for, but for hotels specifically hotels they, they, they keep the air conditioning on um but, um I mean uh, most times throughout the day, so that's why I, I would I would definitely recommend upgrading to inverter uh, when you have um, um, when you have like eight hours like when you're operating your air conditioner like eight hours a day or, or more. So, but well, yeah, I guess I, Ronaldo and Tobago, it's, it's a little different here because a mm -hmm. lot of the accommodation here might even be very small Airbnb yeah. types of buildings. Some people only have one or two rooms. And okay. some also have, you know, smaller rooms with AC, but open air. So I guess they're probably hmm. asking from that perspective of a smaller okay. accommodation type. Well, well, yeah, in that case, maybe it might not make sense to, to pay the extra money for an, air, for an air conditioning, I mean, for an inverter air conditioning unit. But also bear in mind, too, that these inverter types could actually last a bit longer because of less, less wear and tear. So, I mean, you might have to replace a, a, a traditional air conditioning unit a, a lot sooner than you might have to replace an inverter. So you can look at it from the long-term perspective as well, too. Noted, because we are looking into long-term gains, not just short-term cost efficiency. Yeah. Thanks for that, Ronaldo. So we have another question from Wanda. Would power strips help protect an appliance from an electrical power surge? Yeah, yes, I believe they, they are they'll help surge protectors. I, I believe that's what they actually refer to uh, most sometimes as surge protectors as well. So yes. Yeah, so. Okay. And I know this is a, a bit of a technical question here, um, but Jano wanted to know if you have to get permission from TN Tech to increase your power factor. Um increase why would you want to increase your power factor i think you mean decrease right um no you don't need permission from tia to actually actually um electric companies all over the world encourage you to to reduce your, your power factor actually we're lucky in Trinidad and tobago because other countries around the world especially the large countries they actually penalize um customers for having too too high um too low a power sorry too low a power factor in their home, they actually, they actually get penalized for that. And I, I, I'm actually not too sure if I haven't I've been able to confirm yet if Tiendek does penalize people for having low power factor um, in, in their homes. But um, 
I mean, some I, I talked to. Does, I, I haven't been able to confirm anything officially, but you should talk. You could talk to people from TNDEC about that. But what I can tell you for sure is, um, power factor correction is is to your is to your benefit. Um, I, I think for hotels, especially because of the amount of inductive loads, like I um, hotels and I mean, sorry, um, when I say um, air conditioning units and fans and pumps and all those things, I think. Um, if there's uh, a business that needs power factor correction more than any other type of business, it would definitely be a hotel. Okay, great. Thanks so much for that clarification. But of course, as Ronaldo said, um, talking to TN Tech directly is also a great idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to remind everyone in the chat as well that uh, we will be sending follow-up correspondence from this webinar. So don't worry if you feel like you've missed some of it. Um, we will have some follow-up webinars as well from the old National Ozone Unit, and of course from Green TNT as well. And this is a reminder that this energy efficiency webinar is important, not just of course for your practices and for the sustainability of your accommodation, but it's also because we're encouraging accommodation providers to pursue the Green Key Award. And you heard us mention it earlier, but for those who may have missed it, the Green Key Award is a leading standard of excellence in the field of environmental responsibility and sustainable operation within the tourism industry. So energy efficiency and management is an important aspect of Green TNT. And so that's why we at the Tobago Tourism Agency are so happy to partner with Green TNT and the National Ozone Unit to help educate people about these different energy saving tips, but also prepare you to perhaps also get that award. I'm sure some of you may have heard that Tobago recently had two hotels that received this award, Shepherds Inn and Banana Quit. And we're looking forward to having even more a destination in Tobago as well as Trinidad to successfully sign up for the sustainable uh, award and recognition. So that's just a reminder, be sure to check out Green TNT on Facebook or online at green-tt-org, as well as the Tobago Tourism Agency. And of course, the National Ozone Unit will continue to have webinars on various energy efficiency saving tips. So moving right along, we do have a comment slash question, Ronaldo, from an anonymous attendee. Sure. And it reads, we generally correlate energy efficiency with cost savings. Mm -hmm. However, this may not be so for commercial consumers slash hoteliers while our energy consumption will be reduced we won't see much change if any at all in our electricity bill can you comment on this oh that's what i mentioned um when it comes to energy efficiency you not don't just look at uh, that at the cost the energy cost savings alone there are other things to consider you're also minimizing your long-term um maintenance and, and repair costs and operation costs as well as well as you know, maintaining the longest um, lifespan of the of the equipment, and also energy efficiency goes hand in hand with proper servicing and maintenance, especially with air conditioning users, ensure, ensuring Q, human health and comfort, which is of definitely of value to to your customers, which will be um, to tourists and hotel guests and stuff. So that, you know, like I say, do energy efficiency. When I talk about energy efficiency, don't just look at um, energy savings alone, because yes. Um, energy costs are, are low in Trinidad and Tobago, but that doesn't mean um, energy efficiency isn't isn't necessary. Okay. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, so we are back in the Q and A. We don't have any new questions as yet, but we I think we have most of it answered already. So I actually wanted to comment on what you just said there, uh, Ronaldo. I do have to agree because. Another thing that in energy efficiency is important for is the human comfort and health, not just of your guests, but yourself. I think in the agency, when we're pushing sustainability initiatives, it does look like we're doing it just for visitors, but we have to bear in mind that Trinidad and Tobago is a beautiful place and our natural tourism products are a big part of our appeal. And it's really up to us to protect our environment for the good of visitors, yes, but for the good of ourselves, our children and the future of our very country that we live in. So it may not always be a matter of energy savings, as you said, but you know, other elements of energy efficiency that really help to contribute to a quality of life and the quality of the environment. So thanks for that clarification. 
And thank you for that question, attendee. So are there any more questions we have in the chat? Um, because we are uh, wrapping up soon, but we wanna make sure that any questions, comments at all that you may have, Ronaldo or the rest of the team can answer. So while we await some questions, I just wanna give a little bit of background information um, on the National Ozone Unit, because to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, when I first heard about it, I myself was not too familiar, but now I really respect and admire the work that they do. So as a little bit of background, the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, they acceded to the Vienna Convention for the protection of the ozone layer and the Montreal Protocol for the phase out of ozone depleting substances. So Trinidad and Tobago was actually the first country of the Caribbean Commonwealth to become a party to this multilateral environmental agreement and has ratified all amendments to the protocol. The most recent ratification was to the Kigali Amendment in November 2017, which incorporates climate aspects into the Montreal Protocol. So the National Guidelines for Good Refrigeration Practices has been developed by the National Ozone Unit, as well as other guidelines that you will have an opportunity to learn from, apply to your actual everyday lives, as well as to your businesses, such as today, where we're looking at energy efficiency specifically for accommodation providers in Trinidad and Tobago. So I do encourage you to check out the National Ozone Unit online, as they have a wealth of information not just for green key, but in general energy efficiency and looking to protect the ozone layer and all of that great stuff that I really encourage everyone to be a part of. So back over to, to the Q&A. Um, let's see if we have any more new questions for you, Ronaldo. Sure. All right. I, I do see a couple here. Give me one second to scroll, okay. So somebody asks about solar energy for water heating, which I know is a pretty uh, hot topic and something we've heard about before. So Ronaldo, I don't know if you could give any um, input on that. Solar energy for water heating. Um, I definitely, I definitely re um, recommend it for residences. As for hotels with like, um, if, like uh, especially small hotels, um, I don't know if it'll have uh, enough solar water heating, but for, for large hotels, I, think, I don't think it'll produce enough heating water heating for a lot, like large hotels and maybe medium sized ones. For right. small hotels, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if like, especially with like 15 rooms, uh, up to 15 rooms and so, that it'll be, that'll be a lot of water heating you would need. And, um, you know, I I'm, can't really say for sure, but if it's a very, very small hotel, like I'd say at Airbnb and so with a few, um, a few rooms, then yeah, definitely you could, you could use solar water, solar water heating. Yeah. Well, definitely, because as I, I said, I know for sure in Tobago mm -hmm. that we do have a lot of accommodation properties that have between anything like two to seven rooms. So okay. that could definitely be a viable option. So thank you so much for that. There's a, another question actually on solar panels. Um, someone asks us, Mike, is there value in installing solar panels that can be put back into the grid, reversing the meter reading? That's an interesting question. Um, yeah, well, that is more of a question for like um, people in the renewable energy sector. But um, I mean, what I could tell you is the current laws in Trinidad no um, are prohibitive to to connecting to to, to the grid. Um, it's not really so in the other Caribbean islands, but um, yeah. So that that's why um, I didn't really talk too much about renewable energy in in this presentation. Um, right. And these are questions you surely asked Yen Tech. But I could say um they're currently there are laws now that um, kind of prohibit that. Right. Well, somebody did mention this potential for grid tying, but you're yeah. right, that's more of a question that has to be asked to the implementing organizations. But mm -hmm. today, you know, Ronaldo was really able to give us some background advice and information. But the onus is on you, ladies and gentlemen, and you know, tourism accommodation providers to do the follow-up work, do what's necessary. Do your research because what may apply to you may not apply to others. As you know, Ronaldo mentioned with solar panels being great for smaller properties, not necessarily bigger ones. So you will know the state of your uh, tourism product, your tourism accommodation. So 
definitely do the follow up and find out for yourself. But we're here to equip you with the tips and advice to start your journey toward increased energy efficiency. So we do have a comment, not necessarily a question, from Ian. Nice to see you here, Ian, one of our stakeholders in Tobago. Um, Ian says that he uses it at Adventure Eco Villas. I'm assuming that's his solar panels, Ian. Um, I use it at Adventure Eco Villas for water heating for all laundry and other areas. I have had it for 10 years and it's very efficient. So thanks so much for that, Ian. It's good to know that that uh, solar panel is being applied. Um, hey, can I just mention something? Um, yeah. I was actually, referring, when I was talking about solar systems, I was referring to when you tie into the grid, but yes. off, off the grid, solar systems are definitely with, within law. And I've seen that there, there are a number of places in Tobago that use off the grid solar systems. So that, that, is, that is okay. But remember, these systems are expensive because they need, they need batteries to operate with. Yes. So... I just want to mention that too. Okay, good. Thanks for that clarification, actually, Ronaldo. Um, yeah. We do have a lot of comments about this, this solar panel. I, I think it's quite an exciting option for yeah. people. Uh, so one person says solar panels are best for critical loads, not so much inductive loads. Can you comment on that, Ronaldo? Critical loads, inductive loads. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, um, this is one you might have to talk to an electrical expert about, about that. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody um, also didn't mention this could be referred to the energy department within a THA, so. Yeah. But it's, it's good to see that people are at least thinking critically about it and asking questions that they perhaps have to do some research on themselves. Yeah. So I think what you've done successfully today, Ronaldo, is plant the seed. Um, to have people more excited and looking forward to changing their practices um, to be more energy efficient. So I'll do one last uh, look for any new questions. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have any more questions for Ronaldo based on his presentation, please do drop them in the chat. I've been enjoying seeing your back and forth. So even if it's a, a comment, perhaps something that you've applied at your hotel or accommodation property that you'd like to share with us in the chat please do so um we're happy to hear from our stakeholders to see what you've been doing on your end as well so Ronaldo, i don't know if you have any last comments you want to say before we wrap up since we don't have any more questions yet any um, last words of advice tips or closing statements yeah um, all i can say is um energy efficiency could bring a lot of value to you especially as um if you are if you, if you operate a hotel um like i say don't just think of the energy costs which by the way you know which, which are all all different things that are caught um things that are increasing like fuel prices and things that are increasing these days um you never know if um in, in the future um you know the cost of electricity may may, may increase and if, if that, that was to come at least you would be better prepared to, to handle it than if you if you were to do nothing now and then and so, like I guess, say, try to be more proactive right, rather than than reactive. But yes, yeah, so, and even even if you're, you're not um, you not you don't need to save much in terms of energy. At least you're um, you're saving a lot when it comes to operations and maintenance and repair costs, and you know um, keeping you know comfort and health as well. So that that's bear that in mind as well. That energy efficiency is all about all of these things together, and that's why it could bring value to any business and especially um businesses like like hotels and i think this could this um energy efficiency could be could contribute to um to go a long way for the long-term sustainability of hotels especially uh, in during these pandemic times okay thank you thank you so much for that ronaldo and not just for this amazing presentation that was quite eye-opening and educational but also for putting things into context because I do believe that now is definitely the time to focus more on sustainability. Um, also from a tourism perspective, as you are tourism accommodation stakeholders here in our virtual room. I mean, it's good to know that what travelers are looking for in a post COVID destination includes sustainability and environmental friendliness and that green factor that we wanna to bring to our hotels that green factor that Tobago as well has used in their branding of unspoilt, untouched, and undiscovered. 
So it's so important for us to take these tips to mind and also to bear in mind that this is also part of the journey to becoming a green key awardee. And again, that green key equals certification is so important for us, not just because what it can do for environment, for businesses and our bottom line, but what it means for Trinidad and Tobago in the international space, that we can boast about being a truly green and sustainable destination, not just because we're talking it, but we're walking the talk. So that brings us to the end of today's webinar. So my name again is Sunil Devine, the communication specialist from the Tobago Tourism Agency. And allow me to thank all the hardworking parties who would have worked tirelessly to bring this webinar to life. So first I'd like to thank the team at the National Ozone Unit of Trinidad and Tobago, and specifically, of course, our wonderful speaker, uh, Mr. Ronaldo Mohamed Jalil. Thank you so much for bringing that presentation. I'd like to also thank the members of Green TNT for being in this presentation and partnering with us. And of course, for being the organization that implements Green Key in Trinidad and Tobago. And I'd like to thank the Tobago Tourism Agency as well. That's my organization for being part of this and for really rallying the troops to make sure that we have a sustainable tourism destination for Tobago. And of course, for Trinidad and Tobago by extension. So ladies and gentlemen, make sure to look out in your emails as once you're registered for this webinar, you will be privy to getting some follow-up information where you will be able to sign up for more webinars to find out how to help you become more sustainable in your practices. We will also be sending out a survey to find out what you thought about this event and what you learned from it and perhaps what you would like to learn the next time. So make sure to check out all these organizations online, including Green TNT, that's green-tt-org, Tobago Tourism Agency at Tobago Beyond dot com as well as the national ozone unit of trinidad and tobago their nou-tt.blogspot.com so check out all these organizations and join us as we take trinidad and tobago toward a more energy efficient and sustainable future my name is tenille levines thank you for joining us and have a safe and wonderful evening everyone take care and goodbye